Good Wednesday morning to you. As we continue to think about how God calls us and we focus on the minor prophets, today I want to talk about Habakkuk. Habakkuk is a great example of a minor prophet who often is referred to the reluctant prophet. He actually didn't want to speak for God. He didn't want to get involved in, um, in, in the suffering of this world. And God raised him up and empowered him to do, to do something he never thought possible. Maybe that's something we can relate to. When we think about how God calls us in our life, maybe it's a good reminder that sometimes we are called to do something that we on our own would think impossible. And yet it's through God, all things are possible. God gives us the strength, God equips us, uh, God uses the gifts that God knows that we have, even those gifts that we don't recognize in ourselves to serve him. And Habakkuk is a great example. So if you turn to Habakkuk, um, really there's this theme of um, we, we call out to God for answers and God replaces our answers or uh, responds in our desire for answers with strength. Um, if you look at the short book, it begins in chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1 verse 5 says, Look at the nations and see, be astounded, be astonished. For a work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. And then there's this kind of this response of what's happening. I'm, you know, I'm rousing the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous nation. Um, the people are calling out to God because things are not the way they would want them to be. And God is responding. Um, it's kind of funny because as you get into chapter one, especially through the end of chapter one, there's kind of this theme of, well, well, we're not very good, but they're worse. And I think about that. I think about how our prayers to God is like, well, God, I, you know, I'm, I know I'm a poor, sinful person, but I'm not as bad as someone else. And just like we talked about yesterday, the invitation to respond to God's call isn't just for service. It's also for repentance. In fact, most of what God's call looks like in our lives begins in repentance, begins in this opportunity to repent and be restored in him and then respond to what God has desired for us. Chapter 2 in Habakkuk um, is that declaration, I will stand at my watch post and station myself in the rampart. Uh, faith is a way of life. And in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Habakkuk's reminding the people that, that when we are faithful to the Almighty, when we respond to the Almighty, it changes how we live. Verses 2 through 4 say this, then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that the runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the anointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. When we think about how God's call is in our life, sometimes it's, for specific purposes, sometimes it's for a specific mission, but the overarching call that God gives us through our faith in each of our lives is that we would live by faith. It's what, it's what John will refer to, that we are in the world, not of the world. Paul will say the same thing, that through faith, we look at the world differently than those around us. And when we look at the world differently, we see God at work in a more profound way than those without faith. Um, Habakkuk, if you continue throughout chapter two, there's this overarching theme that without faith, there's only despair. Um, our hope is grounded in God. Our hope is, uh, is part of why we come to God in prayer and we continue to come to God in prayer. The most famous part of Habakkuk, which is only three chapters long, it's a pretty short prophet, which is why we call these the minor, if you remember from yesterday. The minor prophets are not that they are insignificant, it's just, just that they're shorter. If you look at chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, these are the most famous words of Habakkuk and why we tend to um, focus or gravitate to these words more than any others. It says, Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruits are on the vines, though the proudest of the olive fails and the field yields no fruit food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. 
God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. There's somewhat of a radical voice that Habakkuk finds, even though this is not the calling he desired. It's not the, the calling that he wanted. He found his, his own voice to be insignificant. And, and really, although he was faithful, he felt like he was not worthy to respond to what God was asking him to do. Maybe you've experienced that in your own life. Maybe you've looked at your life and, and kind of like Peter in our gospel last weekend, you, you look at the mirror and you see only your own brokenness, only your own failings. Certainly I've done that in my own life. I've, I've looked in the mirror and I've seen all of the sins and the regrets and the things I wish had gone differently. But that's not how God sees us. Uh, God sees us not only for our failings, which are wiped clean through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God also sees in us an opportunity. And Habakkuk, through his faithfulness, at the end of his prophetic voice, he sees that without faith, things are hopeless. It's the fig tree not blossoming. It's There's no fruit on the vine. The olive fails to produce. But with faith with faith, even when things are not the way we would want them to be, we, we find a radical voice within ourselves. We find an opportunity for us to respond with hope. You know, faith is the essence of hope. Hope is the essence of faith. The reality is we would be lost without what God empowers us to do, even when we're not sure what that is. And so as you think about halfway through the week, as you're kind of assessing where you are and, and maybe you're having one of those weeks where everything is going great um, and, and you're seeing God at work in it, but maybe you're having one of those weeks where things aren't going the way you hoped or aren't going the way you expected. Um, can you find a radical voice in that and say, you know what, even though things are not the way I wanted them to be, even though things are not the way I hoped they would be, God is at work yet by faith, yet by faith, even though I don't see fruit being barren, even though I don't see um, things being produced in the way I hope they would, yet God is at work. God is restoring, God is active, God is uh, d directing and navigating me and my life and you and your life. Habakkuk's a great reminder that God calls us to often do things that we don't think ourselves capable of doing. And yet we respond with faithfulness. We respond as Samuel once responded, here I am, Lord. Uh, we may not know what that looks like. We may not feel like we're completely gifted or confident that we can fulfill what God is going to ask us to do. But we respond in faith because that's what it's all about. Hope you have a great Wednesday. We're going to continue to talk about call tomorrow. Thanks and have a good day.